Hmm. Today is a lot colder out. But that's okay. I have my fancy sweatshirt. Ooh, nice. <clears throat> that had pretty good momentum taking this thing apart. I guess I might as well finish it off. I guess I'll take all the heavy pieces off from up there. Like the motor and all this junk. Then I should be able to get the whole thing down on the ground. Off this barrel. Alright, I got the motor off and this big thing and some other stuff. Hmm. Still pretty heavy. How do I get it down? Without making a huge ordeal out of it. Let's see. Alright. I've got three thingies here. One here, one over there, and one over there. And those can hold weight. And this also has a spot where I could put a stick right through here. So I could grab one of these sticks here, stick it up through the hole, attach a rope from here over the stick and back down, and then kind of yank it up with the rope, get that barrel out, and then slowly lo let each side down. That might work out okay. If I let them all lean the same way and wedge themselves in, then it should keep the whole thing from going Darn, I could totally use the sticks I already have up there. The weight is supported by that, and it looks fairly balanced. Maybe I can just yank those suckers out, hold the whole thing with one hand so it doesn't tip over, and then get them in place. Yeah, there's like a 4% chance that'll go smoothly. Unless, of course, before I take this post out, I hook up the rope on this one, and this will support the side, so I can yank that sucker out of there. So, I'm going to need both hands for this operation. With the first two sticks, I got lucky I had nubs that I could wrap the rope over. And this one's pretty short, but I wrapped the rope around behind so it would keep pulling it this way and keep it on there. This one, however, is a little bit hmm, smooth, no nubs. But maybe I can take this knot and just chop into it with a saw to make a nub. Alright, I know there's a saw around here somewhere. I was using it a couple days ago, and it was horrible. It's a horrible saw. It's all dull and stuff, but it's here. It's a girl's saw. I mean, not that I'm implying anything about girls' tools. It's just a, a girl owns this saw, and that has nothing to do with the workiness of the saw. Girls build things too, right? Oh, wait. Robin builds stuff, of course. I just had to think about it for a second there. Come to think of it. Her tools are in better shape than mine are. Anyway, I got my notch notchified here. Alright, that's all three of them in there. Right, I just need to get this off the barrel. <laughs> Whoa, I don't. Whoa, it's totally hard.
to remember this three stick thing because at some point I'm going to have this on the ground somewhere and I'll have to lift it up. This works great. It's almost like I planned it. Yeah, I can just plop it down on there a little bit at a time. I think I'll leave my sticks in place just to keep it from tipping over. But now I can get to that thingy and figure out what to do about it. Hmm. I guess unbolt this whole thing and then I can get the whole top section off there. I'm really glad to get my ball bearing patch up job off there. I don't like patch up jobs. Really, if, if I just did it right in the first place, and there'd be no need for patch up job. And that's what I need to do. Go back to before I made this part and just do it right. Alright, Jamie, I've got something you need to remember. I'm looking at this bearing here, and if I get all the tools out of the way, you know, at some points it rotates really easily, and then at other parts, it gets really stiff. Not nearly as good as when you first built it. And that's because, you know, when you started welding things together, blah blah blah, the whole thing warps a little bit, right? <clears throat> so, when you make a replacement big ball bearing for this, bolt it in place. That way it won't warp after. Just get everything lined up, drill all the holes, and just bolt that sucker right there. Remember to do that. Ah, and if you look under here, this hangs down only about an eighth of an inch below this, the inside part. So if we did make a fancy bearing, it could just bolt to the bottom of this and to the bottom of that. And, you know, if that moves an eighth of an inch, whatever, that's not a serious problem. And hypothetically, we could do that and the same thing on top. Because if you uh, bolted this down flat and got rid of the space, it would be the same height as the inside part, so you could put something on there too. You have to cut some of this junk out of the way, but yeah, it's not a big deal. 
I was just thinking to unscrew these hundred and something screws. It would be really good if I had my drill. How do I get my socket onto my drill? And then I was looking at it, and oh, someone put a hole in it. Isn't that pretty? And now I can put that in my drill. I think I'll put a nut on there just to make it stiff. Oh, beautiful. Someone must have planned that. Oh, this screw is terrible, though. Or maybe it's this nut. Get on her. There we go. Ha-ha! Boom! Machines are cool. <laughs> hmm. So we got that sucker down. Hopefully that fits all out this hole on the side, or else I'll have to pick it all the way back up and out the top. Oh wait, no, I can just dismantle the whole bottom thing. Yeah, that's right. It all comes apart. All right, Jamie. You need to come up with a ball bearing where the balls are roughly 80 centimeters diameter. Hmm. I can hold lots of weight. So go do some thinking. Ah, if only I had a plasma cutter. A CNC plasma cutter. Hmm. Right now, snack time.